In this video, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks when it comes to getting the most out of the new Portrait Bokeh AI feature inside of Luminar AI. Let's get to it. What's up, friends? My name is Pi. Welcome back to another tutorial. Let's get straight into this. I don't wanna waste your guys' time. I would first recommend that you pause the video. If you go to the description of the video, you can find a link to grab the exercise files that we're working on. Feel free, you can also just load up any image that you'd like. Now, what I'd like to do in this tutorial is walk you through a few ideas in terms of what types of images you wanna load into this. I'm gonna show you how the tool works, and then I'm gonna show you how I like to use it, maybe give you a few creative tips along the way, including using the tool for a tilt shift effect. So let's get to it. Okay, so first, I have our first image loaded up. And with all these raw files, you'll notice that they have basic color applied to them. But basically, all I did was took the raw file, applied a look, and you have this. So it's straight from camera with some color adjustments made. Okay, so what we're going to do is jump down into the portrait panel. What you'll notice is that this bokeh AI is applied to portraits. It's portrait bokeh AI, meaning... If you're applying this to an image without a portrait, it is not going to work. But there's a couple other things that I want you to understand about this. The first image you'll notice has a foreground that kind of leads up to the feet, right? If I turn on the amount and then I bring my mask over, so I'm gonna bring this over, the brush over so you can see the mask, you'll notice that Luminar's technology and AI does a fantastic job of selecting our subject out and it worked really well. But you'll see down here that we only have background control. So as I add more or less of this depth effect, it's not really affecting the foreground. Now, as I would guess, and this is not any official word by any means, but the Skylum team is incredibly talented. And I would imagine that we might be seeing some foreground controls in the future, maybe in an update or something. But as of right now, we have control over the background. So you're not going to have the ability to be able to control the defocus effect in foreground elements as of right now. Okay, this is important so that you just know kind of what images, you know, are going to work best with this tool. So we know it's for portraits. We know that we're primarily controlling the depth of the background bokeh. And the third thing that I would say is I generally like to come into Luminar with an image that has a little bit of depth to begin with especially if you're gonna use the effect to a heavy extent, right? If we give it just a little bit of depth, then I find it's a little bit more convincing. You can still get a great look otherwise, but I like doing this when you know I'm gonna really exaggerate the depth effect inside of Luminar. Now let's understand the tool itself. So already we kind of covered the amount, right? Down here under brush control. So this is how you're gonna refine the mask. Now, how do we see the mask again? We bring it right over the image. We can see the red area is our subject that's been selected and anything else is gonna be affected. If we want to increase focus area, right? We would just keep it on this setting here and we would paint over what's already there. And you'll notice that immediately the background behind her head goes in focus, right? If we want to add defocus area, then we would simply go to defocus and similarly paint it back on. But you'll notice that we don't have the same refinement. Like when I'm painting this brush on and off, I can increase the softness or hardness of the brush. If I make it less soft, I do have a more refined control, but it's still gonna be kind of difficult to paint back the focus on this area of the face because I kind of screwed it up, right? So instead of control Zing your way or command Zing your way, undoing your way back into what you had before, go to this restore option. I'm gonna turn my softness back up a bit and with restore, I can simply paint over the image and it's gonna take it right back to where it first detected the subject, right? So this is basically restoring the original mask detected by the AI, which is a really cool feature because it saves us from having to you know, control Z our way back through multiple steps. So that's how we control the mask. Now the tool itself, there's a few things that I like to do to refine this overall look. One, when you apply this depth effect to a background that was somewhat in focus, see, in camera, interesting things happen when the background is defocused, right? Usually we tend to get this blooming effect where highlights kind of bloom and, and spread out, but we also tend to see highlights blow out a little bit more, or at least they're a little bit kind of a brighter tone. So what I like to do is under the background, I like to increase brightness, and usually I find between zero and 30 is a good number for me. Okay, so if you go too high, it's gonna be 
quite bright. But again, nothing wrong with this look. It has that more kind of blown look that I was mentioning. So take it up to wherever you'd like. For this one, I'm actually going to go up a little bit higher. Let's go to 30. And then I like to add that highlight glow back in. That glow that I would see from like the blooming from those highlights coming through and bending around the lens or the subject as they would. I don't know the physics of it. I just know the way it looks, okay? So this gets me a more convincing look. Under warmth, I'm not usually adjusting this. This is gonna cool or warm the background effect and I usually just leave it zeroed out. Um, but if you did wanna cool or you wanna creatively warm, you could totally do that. For depth correction, this is the other piece that's big. So look, depth correction, you're gonna use in tandem with the amount. Meaning, let's say you bring the amount up to 60 and you're like, you know what, I want a little bit more depth. I can actually pull the depth correction towards the left, it's gonna further blur or I can pull it to the right and it's gonna create a little bit more detail. So I kind of like to balance these two. In fact, what I'll usually do is bring the amount down to like say 40 to 45, and then I'll use my depth correction to kind of create the right aesthetic to the bokeh. Bokeh, bokeh, bokeh. I think I've said that a million times in this video already. Okay, last thing, edge correction. This is exactly that. This is the edge of the mask, okay? So what you're seeing here in the edge correction is on the left side, if I were to zoom in, it's gonna soften the transition from these edges over to our subject. And if I pull this all the way to the right, so if I kind of go up to the face, as I pull this to the right, you're gonna see that mask drop into the hair, into the skin, into everything, and it kind of reduces our subject's appearance, right? So I'm usually leaving this to default or I'm subtracting a little bit of that uh, effect out. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back out. But here we get a very nice and convincing look. You guys have a good understanding of the tool. If I hold down the backslash key, you can see the before versus the after. It looks great. Nobody would know that this was done in post versus in camera. Okay, let's go to the next image. And in fact, this image is really the same as the last one. So what I wanna do is actually go to the final image, okay? Because this is the one that we're gonna get a little bit creative on. So the last image we would have done just basically the same thing, which you all already know by now. So for this one, we're gonna go to Portrait Bokeh AI. I'm gonna go ahead and find the effect that I like. So I'm gonna go up to 70. I'm going to increase my brightness a bit in the background, allow my highlights to kind of come through. Okay. I'm gonna start adding a bit of depth correction. Okay, now I like this more exaggerated look to this one, okay? I'm also gonna reduce the edge correction a little. Now, what I wanna do is actually fix a couple things. So one, the mask right here has detected a little bit of this shadow that is basically being focused on. And I wanna eliminate that so it's, it's gonna include that in the defocus area, okay? Number two, what if we wanted to paint kind of a, a more, almost a tilt shift kind of look to the image, right? I could actually use this focus effect, this focus brush, and I'm just gonna paint it on with a soft edge. So I'm gonna paint it on with a very soft edge to it, go right straight through the image where I want my focus to be, okay? I'll go right back. And now we've essentially created a tilt shift effect. So we've used that blur, and you can increase, decrease the amount at this point, you can do whatever you'd like. I might even increase it all the way to 100 just to exaggerate this effect. But now you've got this tilt shift look where the face and everything across this plane is focused and then anything above is defocusing. And again, when we have more control of this foreground, that's gonna be really cool because then we can just further play with this tool as it goes from foreground to background, it's gonna be really fun. But for this image, I'm gonna pull this back just a bit so it's a little bit more subtle. And if you notice like an area right here where it kind of looks defocused, I might just increase the mass size right there. So I'm gonna paint this across to be part of my focus area that I just added. Okay, and I love it. We get this cool kind of exaggerated bokeh effect in the background, this swath of focus, and oh man, oh man, when that foreground effect, I'm saying this as if it's like a thing, and hopefully the Skyline team doesn't be like, Pi, you're overstepping your bounds right now. But you know, I've suggested other things in the past, and they made their way into the software because they're awesome like that, so. Okay, 
Hopefully this video gives you guys a bit of a better idea onto how to use Portrait Bokeh AI. It's a powerful new tool and function. If y'all enjoyed, I'd love for you to give the video a thumbs up and please comment below. Let us know what you guys think about it. It gives us ideas here on the channel on what to bring you guys next in the form of tutorials. To close out this video, Skylam has recently announced a new creative image editor. It's called Luminar Neo. Now it's gonna help creators to achieve complex results using new AI technologies. If you wanna learn more, you can click the link in the description below where you'll also find an early bird special.